Hi, I'm Mitchell Johnson, and I love to bowl fast. Oh! Yeah. Yeah. That's fast. If you want to play top-class cricket, talent only gets you so far. It takes hard work, perseverance, and dedication. I'd like to show you some of my favourite moments playing for Australia. Then onto the training paddock to show you some training drills that can help improve your game. Like anyone else, I probably started in the backyard. Um, played a lot of back backyard cricket with my mates and in Townsville. But um, I played at school and, and sort of really enjoyed it. Uh, but I, I didn't want to really go to the next level like club cricket or anything like that. But my mates dragged me into playing club cricket eventually. Um, because I was playing playing other sports at the time as well. So, um, yeah, cricket wasn't sort of my main sport, but really enjoyed bowling fast, um, but also enjoyed hitting the ball as long as I could, as far as I could. Um, influences, uh, Kirtley Ambrose actually was one of my favourite uh, bowlers. Um, I just loved his attitude, the way he bowled. Uh, he was big and tall. Um, didn't mind bowling a bouncer. Uh, was just an aggressive, aggressive bowler. So I remember watching him in a one-day series against Australia one, one summer. Um, so then you go out in the backyard and you know try and do the same action as him. And obviously I was le left-handed, so I'd do it the opposite way. But um, yeah, he was he was probably my first cricketing hero. I would have, I would have thought. I think early on um, I was quite quite slingy. I've always been a slingy bowler, but I was I was pretty low and slingy uh, when I first came on. Just didn't have the strength, I guess, to hold my body up um, at a young age. But like I said, you'd all, us, us kids would, would always try and imitate different bowlers uh, in the backyard. And um, But yeah, I, I pretty much just went with whatever came out. Tennis was my main sport. Uh, I was right-handed tennis player. Uh, that was I wanted to go to Wimbledon by the age of 18. That was my my goal and that kept me out of cricket trials as well um, So when I did start playing cricket, I missed out on a lot of cricket trials uh, Because I was always going to play tennis and uh, Whatever tennis was on I was there. So outside of school through the javelin um, I played soccer when I was younger um, I ditched a couple of classes uh, to play school sports, so um, I'd just go into different classes and, and join in, and the teachers were, were okay with that, I think, at that time. Having that hand-eye coordination in, in tennis uh, definitely helped with my cricket. I guess just having that agility, you know, was, was a, a big part as well. It, it, it definitely helped me with being a fast bowler and being in the field, moving around in the field. Like I said, hand-eye coordination. I think just being so active, uh, you know, in towns or always outdoors, playing, playing in the sun, it all probably played a big part, uh, definitely. The first day I met Dennis was at a fast bowling camp in Brisbane, six months out of high school. Wasn't sure what I was going to do with myself at that stage. Um, it was either the army or um, possibly cricket. Um, still at that stage I didn't really know so I, I was invited to a fast bowling camp, uh, the Pace Australia camp um, in Brisbane so I flew down for the day. Met Dennis in the uh, indoor nets uh, at the Gabba and I just went in there and tried to bowl as fast as I could. Uh, I think I, in the indoor nets I clocked one at 140. I think that caught his attention and uh, I guess being a left armer, uh, I didn't know any different at that stage, but being a left armer, you know, there wasn't, wasn't a lot around at that, that, that point. So, um, yeah, I just went out there and, and let rip and, um, yeah, he spoke to me afterwards and, and then pretty much after that it sort of all went pretty quickly. I guess I didn't really know at first what, it was, what was going on. Um, you know, I flew home after that pace camp and I had to do a, a photo for the Townsville Bulletin and a little article and uh, flew straight to, to Adelaide and uh, I came down there with long hair and a, I think a Metallica shirt or something like that so um, my eyes uh, were, were well opened when I went down there you know everything was so different to what I what I knew to go on an Australian under 19 tour 
uh, was really exciting. I'd never been out of the country and never really been out of the state until I um, yeah, moved, went to, to Adelaide for the academy. So it all happened really fast. I went back to Townsville after that long tour. I think it was about two months in England. Um, and then, yeah, it, uh, it sort of all, all happened from there. I, I think I spent a couple of months at home in Townsville and, and then I moved to Brisbane, was picked up uh, in the Queensland squad as a rookie player. And so I moved to Brisbane all by myself. Um, as, as a 17-year-old, I was, I was quite shy growing up, so it was a pretty big move for me. Yeah, there's, there's some exciting prospects out there. I don't really want to put pressure on young guys, but I saw a, a young quick from Queensland last year, um, Mitchell Johnson, who looks um, an outstanding prospect. He's yet to break into the Queensland side, so I don't want to put too much pressure on him, but um, he looks a good. The progress of 19-year-old Johnson, who took three wickets for the QAS against New Zealand last week, has been watched closely over recent seasons, Dennis Lilly proclaiming him a once-in-a-lifetime talent. i just got to try and leave that behind you and just go out and do my best. The Townsville youngster apparently more comfortable with ball in hand than having to describe how quick he is. Uh, oh, I don't know, um, just a fast one. It really did happen pretty fast and um, it was all really exciting. So um, it was a great move for me, I really enjoyed it. Well, I had a history of back stress fractures, um, I had four of them, which almost stopped me completely. Um, I was a week away from having an operation, um, rods put in my back and screws. I had a lot of years where I went through I'd go through a pre-season, get through a really good pre-season and then I'd start bowling again and then get to the season and then break down. So that sort of happened for a few years and it was quite frustrating. Um, you know, you, you, just, you just can't do anything. You, you, you're trying your hardest to um, go out there and bowl and play and, but you just, you just stop from the, the fractures, you know, you just can't do anything. So I ended up going home for... Um, I was about 23, 24 when I had my last stress fractures. Um, I had, I think, two at the same time, um, pretty bad ones. And I went home to Townsville for about a month and I was con considering not playing again. Um, you know, I just had been through so much throughout those years, uh, just the, the frustrations and, and just the doing all the hard work and then coming back and then getting injured again. And then, you know, it was just all getting to me. So. You know, I spoke to friends and family and, and they just sort of pointed me in the right direction. Um, inside myself, I knew that, well, I thought that I could make it. Um, I thought I could play for Australia uh, deep down. So I really felt like I didn't want to have that regret if I didn't, didn't play again. I just wanted to make sure that I gave it everything that I could. I ended up having a an injection in my back in the facet joints in my back, two injections to, to help me out and I sort of, well those injections worked. I came back to, to Brizzy. I started working as a plumbing delivery driver for a guy named Brett Mortimer who was one of our, oh, my Norse coach. He, he took on a few of the young blokes from, from cricket and we, so we had a few guys in there that played or played with and um, you know, so we had a bit of fun working together, but uh, it was really good for me just to, to have that focus away from the game, I think. Uh, I think that was a big part of it uh, because I was so focused on just playing cricket and having these injuries, you know, uh, it didn't help just having that, that mi uh, mindset. So it was really good for me to get up at five in the morning, um, get out there, get on the road. Um, do some hours, you know, I'd finish anywhere from 12 to 2 uh, and then I'd go and train. So it really, it gave me an opportunity to uh, really learn about myself, um, but also learn how to train hard, um, earn some money, um, have a different focus in life, just just really be relaxed about it. Um, but yeah, once once I'd finished and, and I'd go to, go to training, you know, I felt like I had a purpose at training. I knew what I needed to do uh, to, to get myself right. I still do get a little bit of soreness there, quite low down in my back, um, at the top of my glutes sort of thing. It's just something that you, you learn to manage and, and feel what, what good pain and bad pain is, um, which is really important because I think I went through a bit of a stage there where, you know, sometimes you, you're bowling and you're, you get a bit sore and then you just stop because you think it's, it's bad pain. But I think that was something that I learnt over, 
over time, as I got older and, and um, I guess bowled a lot more, um, I learnt what good pain and bad pain was. I was getting wickets uh, at the club level um, and performing really well, uh, so I pretty much put my hand up to uh, to play some shield cricket again. So um, yeah, they were they were really keen on me. Queensland were really keen on, on playing me again, um, and uh, it was another good opportunity for me. And I, I knew that I'd probably only have one chance at it. I had a lot of years there where I was in and out with injury, and you know Queensland really did support me in that way. But it got to the point where yeah, they needed to to move, move me on because um, I wasn't playing any cricket so I just felt like it was it was a, a one chance sort of opportunity and um, I, I felt like I made the most of it. Um, you know I played a, a shield final that year uh, coming back into to playing for Queensland and you know it was just really exciting for me to to get back in and, and to perform well so it was just the start of, of, uh, of my career. You know that, that final will always be in the back of my mind uh, as a I guess a really hard fought five days of cricket, uh, even though we scored 900 in, in that game. Um, but just to go out there and perform the way I did, uh, I played some hard aggressive cricket and it sort of set the tone for, for my career, I think. Being 12th man for the entire Ashes series, um, it was really exciting, um, frustrating at times, but uh, that's that's part of it. That's part of the, the growing up, um, the maturing side of things. I think you you get to experience how guys play the game, see how they are off the field. You get to really watch the game closely. I think that's one thing. As a twelfty, you, you, you really are focused on the game because you're watching every player out there and just making sure you don't miss a call or anything like that for a drink or, or something. You know, I got to be alongside McGrath and Warren and, and Langer and Hayden and eventually got to play with a couple of those guys which was really good but um, yeah it, it can be frustrating at times as well because you you, you feel like you're, you're, you're bowling well in the nets and, and doing really well doing all the right things but um, you know I think it's really important as well to to, to be a 12th man uh, because you get to experience the different side of the game um, and I think it's, it's, it's just all part of the game. Dressed for state duties, but it wasn't long before the young paceman was kitted up in national gear. Rocked up the training and Terry's pulled me aside and our coach Terry Oliver and um, basically told me and uh, I couldn't believe it. Spruiked as a future international by Dennis Lilly after watching him bowl just three balls, the Townsville left arm as rise is meteoric. A lot of emotions, excitement, um, just that proud feeling, uh, just a huge smile on your face, you know, you, you get that sore, sore mouth because you're smiling constantly. He'll be a bit nervous tomorrow, there's no doubt about that, but he's got everything there that's required to be successful at this level. You know, he's a, he's a great athlete, he's very fit, he's very strong. Um, you know, he can bowl 150 kilometres an hour and, and swing the ball. It's a massive moment for Mitchell Johnson, the local boy here on Brisbane Turf, to test debut. He hasn't had it easy in his career with injuries and hard times. Dropped from the bull squad not long ago. There's a lot of emotion down here. Glenn McGrath was the guy who presented uh, my baggy green, which was, which was really cool as well. Uh, I don't remember what he said because you're just so caught up in the moment. You know, I know there was a, a lot of words like pride and you deserve to be there and all that kind of stuff, but it, it's one of those things that you're just so, so wound up and so excited and you're just so happy to put that baggy on. Whoa, there's the proudest man in the nation right now. On it goes, and it fits. Yeah, it's a very special moment. Yeah, Mitch, to me, is, a, is an amazing cricketer. You know, left armour, so strong, just a natural athlete. You know, he's got everything to be a successful cricketer for a long, long time to come, so you know, I'm pretty excited about it. Let's not lose sight of the fact that one man's going to be nervous. Mitchell Johnson, his first test match. Bit of a cheer from round the ground. Yes, Stuart Clark's actually the man to come down and get his hat. So it will be Mitchell Johnson to bowl the first over in the Vulture Street end. And once again, the local Queensland crowd are ecstatic. First ball in Test cricket, well, you, you don't remember it. It's pretty nerve-wracking. Um, you know, you, you feel like you're going to drop the ball or, you know, your hands... Uh, you know, you can put your hands up and you're just shaking. I do remember Glenn McGrath saying, when you're walking back to your mark, take it all in. 
um, you know, look around and, and, and take the crowd in and really enjoy it. But then when you're at the top of your mark, just, just make sure you're ready to go and know what you want to do. And, you know, it was really good advice. Here's Mitchell Johnson, his first ball in Test Match cricket. Pretty good one. No great pace, but uh, on the spot. Honestly, my first over, I think it might have been my first two overs, I couldn't breathe. Um, it, it's, you're just so excited and, and nervous at the same time. Um, everything just gets blocked out. You just, I was, yeah, I couldn't breathe. I was struggling to, to run in and to breathe, but I felt like I went okay my first couple of overs. Once you get that out of the way, then you, you get into the game and, um, yeah, you, you, you sort of take it all in. Well, that's well bowled. Well, there's an indication that uh, he is relaxing a bit. 147, even one delivery up to 150. Don't get too many left arm genuine quick bowlers at that sort of pace. It's an absolutely amazing feel feeling to, to also get your first wicket, I guess, as well. It's, um, you know, Adam Gilchrist uh, caught behind. Oh, got in! Yes, he has! That's his wicket, that's what he needed. The perfect pine. Pitch to win across the right-hander. Congratulations to Richard Johnson, his first test winner. Be the first of many, I think. He's doing a terrific job. Forced his way into the side and now has a success. Uh, nothing better than getting a nick behind uh, at the Gabba. So, um, yeah, I, I can't remember what it did to celebrate. Um, I probably looked like a bit of a goose, but, um, yeah, it, it was a pretty awesome feeling. You know, I, had a, I had family at the game which is, you know, really exciting to have your, your family watching you and, um, you know, to be able to look back into the crowd and see them cheering you on. I think at the start of that test, I, I was copying a little bit of stick from the crowd and then I started getting a few wickets and the crowd were right behind me. So I guess it was just one of those days where everything just clicks and, and, and you don't really remember much because, you, yeah, you're just so relaxed and, and you're so much in the moment. He's taken him on again. Is this Mitchell Johnson or Adam Gilchrist? Gotcha. That's in the air and that's gone a long, long way. Gotcha. Nice stroke. Oh, big ball. I like scoring runs. Um, you know, we all do. Um, especially down the lower order, it, it can be frustrating for a, for a bowler coming in and, and bowling the top of off stump and you're nicking them down the third man and, and, and it sort of gets you away and gets you going and yeah, there's nothing, nothing more exciting than scoring some runs against uh, some quality bowlers. Oh, except for there. That's brilliant. Oh, tuck that. That is absolutely hammered. That's got to be the start of the day. How good is that? But in saying that, if I get a, get out early and I play a rubbish shot, I do get fired up to go out there and bowl. Or if I've been given a send off by a, a bowler, um, you know, it, it definitely definitely helps my confidence. I don't feel like I, I've fully played to my potential as a batter. Um, I, I've had my moments. That's a superb stroke off the back foot. Ooh, not a bad shot for number eight. Any contribution I can make, um, I feel that if I can make close to 50 batting at eight, um, you know, I'm doing a really good job. Full of courage, excitement, entertainment. Uh, he's got 50 now. It's pretty difficult, I suppose, as, a, as an all-rounder. I have a look at Shane Watson and... Um, you know, the amount of stress that it can put on your body and, and it can make you pretty weary at, at the end of a test match. Um, if you're opening the bowling and, and batting at eight and scoring runs, um, it definitely takes it out of you. So I like what I'm doing at the moment. I don't want to change a thing. I just, I just want to be more consistent with my batting. Where it would have changed for me is, um, I guess, scoring 100 in a test match um, in, in South Africa. Um, I, I think it was 09, the, the first, 
the first test I scored 96, not out. Um, I was left stranded and I wasn't too upset about it to be honest. I was really excited to make 96, um, my highest score in a test, test match. Um, and then I got out for a duck in the next one. Uh, that wicket was quite sporting in Durban, so I was, I was pretty happy <laughs> um, getting out. I know Mike Hussey copped a lot on the body that, that test match, and, um, but we won the series there. But uh, they got in, went to, to Cape Town and I scored my, my maiden 100 there. I, I thought of just playing as a one-day game, really. Uh, I was just, just going to go after every ball. Um, that was my, my plan. Uh, they had the field set right back for me. so. The only choice I had was either to run it around for twos, which I don't like running um, in between the wickets like that. So by that stage, I was probably pretty cooked. So it was either boundaries or, or sixes. So I hit Dale Stain for a, for a six over square leg or mid wicket, um, which doesn't happen very often uh, when he's bowling the pace that he does. Oh, hello. Hello. Yes, you little beauty. A sixer wins it. What a way to go to 100. He sort of um, gave me a little bit of a glance when he did and a little bit of a smile, but um, yeah, it was, it was very exciting. I felt great. Uh, I just won Best Player in the World Award, <laughs> uh, which I was quite surprised with, but I, I was going well at that stage, um, enjoying my cricket, and I thought I was going to have a good series. I guess it was one of those things that I probably got complacent. Um, got into England, I remember we had to line up, uh, we had a line up of media and I was just blown away by it, I, I didn't expect it, um, you know, a few of the senior players like Mike Hussey and, and uh, Ricky Ponning were, were saying, you know, you've got to expect, you know, we've got all this media attention, it's an Ashes series and, and I guess that was probably the starting point for me of, of probably... Um, I guess starting to think about a lot of different things um, in my game and uh, where it all sort of probably went wrong for me. With another forgettable tour match behind him, Mitchell Johnson made a fleeting appearance at Australia's first net session at Edgebaston. Mitchell, third round to go. With figures of one for 107 at Northamptonshire, it's no surprise questions about his form slump continue to stalk the Aussie team. Well, it's not a, a, as big a concern, I, I think, as everyone's making it out to be. I was just blown away by the attention that we got. The, the you know, we were copying a fair bit of bit of stick straight away from their media. You know, that was their plan to to get into our heads, um, and it worked on me. Uh, I wasn't used to it, so I was used to being praised and, you know, good on you, well done, you, you're going well, and then all of a sudden, you know, they were picking on little things that I'd never you know, maybe heard of or even thought of and um, yeah, it sort of all just started from there. So it was, um, yeah, it was, it was pretty brutal. I learned a lot. Um, I learned that I needed to really just focus on myself um, and, and what the team needed. Um, the crowds were, were full on as well. So I needed to learn how to block things out. Um, and I guess at that stage I, I didn't know how to do that, so it was a real, really good learning experience for me. And, I, and, and to go through it, um, you know, has only made me grow as a as a person and a player. There was a lot of things off field that were going on at the time as well, um, personally that that were really affecting me. Um, and, and and now I've I've got through all that stuff. You know, I've been able to to learn from it, and you know that their crowds were are very supportive of their team as they should be um, you know the Barmy army are, are right behind them and it's constant with them uh, it doesn't stop uh, we saw it through our summer recently it doesn't matter if they're winning or losing they're, they're constantly singing and and getting right behind their team so i think it just drives you more to to want to win uh, losing a series like that um, like i said there's just so much history that comes with it and so much passion involved in it um, you know, you can feel the energy uh, in an Ashes series when you when you step out in the field, and even before you step out into the field. Like I said, the, the media build up, the the support that they have. You know, it, it's just you're in the in the town of of, of London, and you can just feel uh, feel it all. I don't think I was confident going into it, to be honest. If, yeah, I, I felt like a lot of pressure. Um, personally on me, but also on the team. Uh, our media, 
I felt that they weren't supporting us straight away. You know, they, they weren't backing us 100% um, after what happened uh, over in England. You know, they felt like the, the crowd support wasn't quite there. So it was, it was very difficult from, from ball one, um, or, before the ball, or before we even bowled the first ball. Um, yeah, it was, it was a very difficult, very difficult time. You know, we're in our home, home country, and I guess we wanted to perform really well. We wanted to win that series. Um, and I guess we sort of come into that Brisbane test and being in a pretty good position uh, and then for their, for their team to, to bat the way they did, you know, Alistair Cook and I think it was Trot, they, they scored hundreds and uh, just took, us, took the game out of our hands. Um, you know, I think that was, was quite depressing for the team um, and it was a, a, a bad start for the, for the tour. Mitchell Johnson, minus the moustache, was all smiles in Adelaide. It's been a rare sight lately. Selectors are watching his every move, and with fast bowling reinforcements now in camp, the pressure is real. Selectors have obviously got a tough job, um, but we've got to pick the, you know, I guess the attack that we think can take 20 wickets on, on a pretty good batting wicket. Uh, being dropped in the Adelaide Test was, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was upsetting. Um, I know I didn't perform well on that, that test and, and, and before that I hadn't performed well. I was very up and down. I think oh my goodness me. There was a lot of emotions that came with it. I think I did some media uh, not long after being dropped and I felt like I, uh, I, I handled it pretty well. Yeah, like you said, it's obviously disappointing but it's not the end of the world. It's, um, we've still got a lot of tests to go in this series and um, you know, I'm going to be working my way back to get into this uh, test team and hopefully be a big part of it. I think getting away from all the, all the hype, everything like that, um, getting out there in the nets and working on it like that, I think it's probably the, the best option for me um, instead of trying to work it out in the game. Um, where I guess in the last test I was trying to do, um, do exactly that, was trying to work on it out there, which is obviously very hard to do. You know, I'm going to take a lot of positives out of this and work really hard. There's been a lot of players before me that have been dropped and come back in and work their way back in so you know that's what I'm planning to do and you know hopefully it's going to make me stronger. All those emotions were flowing while I was speaking but um, you know I guess you learn how to, to deal with all that as well but uh, I did some training uh, while that game was going on in the nets and I worked with Troy Cooley and, and Stuart Carpenter on a few things um, and then went to Perth uh, I think I might have went there one or two days earlier I didn't travel with the team and did some training with Dennis Lilly again um, and obviously Troy and, and Stuart and did a bit of the behind the scenes sort of work with them and just got back into uh, a really good frame of mind and um, you know, got picked for that test in Perth again and, and performed really well there. That's nicely hit, cleanly hit. Wonderful 50. Just that roar, that feeling of support from the crowd. Often you, you're looking for appreciation at this level. You're trying your best. It doesn't quite come, but just a simple roar like that, be it with batting hand, not ball, will do his confidence uh, no harm at all. Well, a big cheer has uh, gone up around the ground here as Mitchell Johnson has been given the ball. He's the uh, fastest of the Australian bowlers and if he has as good a time with the ball as he had with the bat, then uh, we could be in for some fun and games. All eyes are on Mitchell Johnson. No more so than the coaching staff, who have decided not to play him in a Shield game, but bowl him in the nets for two weeks while they get this technique right. Well, today's the day he shows if it's worked or not. In the air, got him! Good catch, Mike Hussey! Lay to his right. There's the call. Just a hint of a way swing there from Mitchell Johnson, and quite late. Oh, that's got to be very close indeed. That's out. I reckon it's out LBW too. Swung it back down the line, and I reckon shots right in front. He doesn't even look for a review. That's bluff. Yeah, he almost walked for that one. Johnson really with his tail up now. And the good news is he's getting that ball to swing back in a bit to the right-hander. Yeah, it's an amazing feeling to, to get the ball to, to shape back in like, like that, nice and late. 
there was a, a few LBWs there that you know that you know I can still think of and, and sort of see now, uh, visualise now, and that's something that you know you you visualise before. Well, I visualise before games is, is bowling that you know perfect ball, uh, and it was that, those kind of balls that come back late um, and hit them on the pads or bowl them. So um, yeah, when that happens, it's um, yeah, there's no better feeling. And there's another shot. Can he get another one? He does! Mitchell Johnson's the man! That is brilliant bowling, Mitchell Johnson. Constant build-up. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Results in three wickets. Kevin Peterson out for the day. England three for 82. There was a lot of emotions going through me at that stage. And I think I might have um, gestured up to the, the comm box a, a couple of times. and to certain people and you know that have written me off and, and all that stuff. Whoa! Good morning. It was really nice to see the ball come out the way it did, you know, to get that good swing, late swing, um, you know, to obviously get uh, quality players out. Oh, that's worth the shout! That's worth the huge shout! No, he's missing off. Ooh. Didn't do enough. Well, I think it was up. It's hit him in line. That is a, a yeah. lot of shape, and that is hitting. That is a challenge, and that is successful for Australia. They've turned the decision around. It's going to be out. It is out. Mitchell Johnson, take a bow. He's had wonderful support in the last two weeks, Mitchell Johnson, and he's delivered. Edge struck to Shane Watson. That'll do. Mitchell Johnson has knocked over England with a six-wicket haul. Boy, didn't Australia need that. That was intimidating. Jimmy Anderson didn't want to know. Johnson steaming in, delivering good pace with great control. Watson watched it all the way. Thank you very much. Mitchell Johnson will get a huge cheer from the wicket. Especially after being dropped from the, the previous test and to be able to come back and, and to perform well, um, you know, it's, it's, it's an absolutely great feeling. When I got that injury in South Africa, there was relief. Um, oh, I guess for a fair while before that, uh, I was probably hoping to get injured uh, or just somehow get away from the game. I needed to, like I said, I needed to work on a few things. I needed to get away and just freshen up and um, work on some of my strength, work on my fitness, um, work on some technical stuff. And I just wasn't able to do that while I was constantly playing. So there was a lot of relief there. Um, as much as you don't want to have an injury, um, I was sort of praying for one. And it, it came, came about in South Africa. Um, but we were able to win that test, which was really good as well. So I'm glad we were able to win that test. But. Yeah, I had some time off, which was, yeah, I think it was really beneficial to me. The first two months of my injury, um, I had a boot. I was in a boot for, for my toe and uh, on crutches, so I didn't miss cricket at all. I don't think I really watched it at all. Wasn't following it, just wanted to get away from it. Um, and by the end of that two months, out of the boot, I, then I started to get that itch back again. Just wanted to start training. Um, it was really exciting to train again. Uh, you know, I hadn't had a pre-season for a while, so it was just a good feeling to get out there and, and to run with, with the Warrior boys, the Wacker boys. Um, just worked on a lot of things, which was uh, really exciting for me. So it sort of just built and built and built over time, um, and it just got the drive inside me was, was uh, getting deeper, and, and I was more hungry and looking forward to playing cricket again. So, um, you know, it was, it was a really good time in my life. Dennis's role through this, uh, you know, I was able to work with him with my run-up. He told me to run with a cricket ball uh, just to get my running technique because I used to have a really low arm um, sort of run-up and 
So then we lengthened my run up and had a ball and uh, I did a little bit of running with a ball on my hand just to be more natural. Um, worked on a little bit of technique stuff, but also just to be mentally tough. Um, you know, he's a great mentor. He's been a great mentor to me throughout my whole career. And uh, for him to, to give me the time, um, you know, he's a legend of the game. And uh, to have that time, he'd, he'd come down in his personal time and, and watch me bowl and help out. So, um, yeah, he's been a, a huge part of my career and a huge help. Um, but I guess the, the real drive did come from myself. And if I didn't have that drive, I, I, I wouldn't have come back and, and played cricket. That Sri Lankan series uh, in Australia was was a great. Uh, it was a really good series to come back and, and play. You know, Sri Lanka are a top side, and um, you know, coming up against uh, Sangakara and uh, Dilshan and Jay Wooden, you know, quality players. Lanka in trouble at two for nineteen. Mitchell Johnson is enjoying the fact he's back out there for his country. The Jay Wooden event. That's a nasty delivery. Brute of a ball straight after the drinks break. Mitchell Johnson steaming in. That's 200 wickets for Mitchell Johnson. And what a catch for Matthew Wade. Yeah, I felt like uh, I was ready to play again. Um, I didn't feel the pressure uh, in that series. I, I just wanted to go out there and enjoy myself. And that was, that was something that I, that I learnt through coming back from my injury was, you know, I, I, Learned just to enjoy myself, play, play and have fun. Um, had that self-belief and confidence. Another one! He's got that two! The two! The guard's got another one! Oh, what a performance! Oh, dear, oh, dear! Oh. Whacked the glove of Puma Sang Karan. Took the left hand off the bat straight away. Ooh. Massage now, he's wringing his hand also. Surely not another one. Oh, he's bowling. He's chopped it on. He's gone for the big pull or hook shot. Bottom edge, and Johnson's got another one. He's, he's having a superb match. He's running a mark. I wasn't focused on what people were saying um, outside the game. And I, I was just going out there to, to really enjoy myself and be with my mates, um, you know, and... and I felt like I did really well there, so I, I felt like it showed as well. So Johnson pulls, pulls beautifully. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, tuck that. That is absolutely amazing. Uh, he's got 50 now. Lots of good news there from the Australian point of view with Mitchell Johnson getting runs. You know, I felt like I was, you know, smiling a lot through that series, uh, and, and it wasn't put on. You know, I was really enjoying myself, so it was yeah, a great series. I think there was a statement there. Um, I wanted to prove to myself that I could handle, firstly, the the English crowds, the the media, but also I had I had full belief in myself that I could perform well. I've always felt in one day cricket that I've performed well. Um, and I had that confidence going into that series. It was just more for me to, to handle, wanted to see if I could handle uh, the crowds and, and the noise over there. So I was able to block that out and that was a really good telling point for me that I was um, you know, in a good frame of mind and, and, and I have had learnt from my experiences over there in the past. It definitely gave me a mental edge um, for sure uh, and I think in the back of their minds, um, you know, they definitely were thinking about me a lot. We did hear that they, you know, brought a fast, a left arm fast bowler over with them to, to Australia to to practice. So I was definitely in the back of them or in the front of their minds. So yeah, I think after that series, they were, were definitely um, thinking about me, and I, I I had a lot of confidence after that series. I remember sitting at Allen Borderfield and. Uh, we were talking to Michael Clark, uh, us quick bowlers, Ryan Harris um, and Peter Siddle. We were sitting down with him and, and we, we pretty much had our plan of what we wanted to do uh, through the series. So we had our, we had our roles and we had our plans um, and, and we stuck through that, uh, we stuck with that throughout the whole series. We didn't change 
um, the way we wanted to play through that whole series. So I think we had a, the guys had a lot of confidence coming out of the, the England um, Ashes series. You know, even though we lost it, there were a lot of tight games. Uh, you know that the guys thought they could win or were close to winning, and I think that guys just had a lot of momentum coming into that. But to be back in that first test at Brizzy, um, you know, was was an unbelievable feeling. Um, it's always an amazing feeling to play play at the Gabba. Um, you know, I've played a lot of cricket there now for Queensland and for Australia and. Uh, we had a great crowd there and it was a great feeling, you know, the build up to this Ashes series was the best, best feeling I've, I've ever felt. So, you know, the, we had the crowd support, we had the media support, we had, um, we, we had everything. So it was just a great feeling coming into that. Brad Haddon's uh, and I, our partnership were, you know, that was a real c crucial part of the, uh, the test match. Um, you know, that got us a bit of momentum, you know, we were struggling at that stage and it was, it was really good to get out there and bat with Brad. Um, he's really exciting to watch, um, you know, he can be blocking away and then all of a sudden he, he's hitting you over cover or, um, you know, he's playing a flick shot or whatever. But, you know, it was a really important partnership at that, that point of the game. So I think they might have thought that they were going to roll over us cheaply at that stage and you know we just stuck with it it's in the air and that's gone a long long way the lusty blow from Mitchell Johnson nice stroke oh big ball big ball that's well done this has been very intelligent batting from Mitch Johnson Mitchell Johnson coming back into the team and a huge amount of pressure but many runs that he can score it's got to give his ball in the lift as well. My thinking at that stage was I didn't want to bowl yet I just wanted to stay out there and keep them out as long as possible. Tossed up and dispatched that's going all the way. Well that's nearly gone straight into Mitchell Johnson's favourite set of fans the Barmy Army. Just to the right. Well, that's a terrific shot from Mitchell Johnson. The lap slog moves him on to 49. So he goes airborne, just takes it over the lot. And that's going to go for four. What a terrific innings from Mitch Johnson. Under enormous pressure, he's come out and peeled off the half century. Well done. I just yeah tried to stick it stick it out there with, with Brad and we ended up scoring a few runs and it really did get us into the game. And then when Jonathan Trott came in, uh, Michael brought me on to bowl and that was the plan was to go hard at him. Oh, I like that. That's fast. That's something. We knew that he'd step across a long way and, and the way he plays the short ball, he, he struggled in that one day series earlier in England and that was a plan to him. Yeah, that crucial over before, before the break. He's looking at his watch now, Alim Dar's looked. he looked look at his watch, not at the big clock here at the Gabber. It says 11.59, he takes the hat, and he's happy for one more over. We're all rushing to get, get that in, and I, I, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't have been keen on it. And the last thing Jonathan Trott wanted on earth Exactly right, and these are the little things you look for in games of cricket that just think, well, might be our day today. And by getting this over, it's, you're playing red time cricket now, you're red zoning, and Mitchell Johnson, if he can really crank it up here and get six good ones of Jonathan Trott. A Carberry ball around the wicket. I didn't want to go around the wicket uh, originally, and I was a bit iffy about it. Um, and then my, Michael was really keen on me to do it, so... I think I spoke to him about it just briefly and he just said just to change the angle and see what he does because he's just letting balls go outside off stump. He was really patient at that stage. So I came around the wicket, we had the, the field set sort of for the short ball. Um, we obviously had our slips in as well. Oh, a little edge, but it's safe. That's what they're bowling for. That's why the field set as it is. So my first two balls went hard at him and then one across sort of the chest height sort of thing, or maybe just a bit shorter, uh, not quite as short as that. 
uh, and yeah, he sort of went to play and leave and panic in their in their dressing room. Um, you know, we our goal throughout the whole series was to go after their tail as well. So once we got their tail in, they I don't think they were too keen on it. You know, Stuart Broad being a left-hander, me coming around the uh, around the wicket, um, going at his body, didn't really give him a chance to move. Oh, he's got a bit of an edge, though. He's What's that hit? Glove on the helmet. And having that field set, um, you know, it, it's definitely it definitely plays in, in their minds. So I think for me, it was about using the conditions as well. You know, fast, bouncy wicket, um, go hard at their tail, and um, you know, it stayed with them throughout that whole series for sure. You know, they they didn't want to borrow it. Oh, that's good heat. Really good heat. I think with Joe Root. Uh, and during that test, uh, you know, I went pretty hard at him a couple of times. It's vicious stuff from Johnson. He'll be in the face of him again. Look at this. This is fantastic test cricket. And then he'll pitch the ball up. It, it's, it's all about feet uh, and, and in, you know, mind games, I guess, as well. Clever. Clever shot again. Won't race all the way before that. Good shot from Mitchell Johnson. He hasn't got just power, he's got some good touch too. Yeah, he needs both. Seeing the power down the ground, this is lovely. The angle from around the wicket from Swan, he just uses the pace. Look at how far he gets those hands out. Oh, chase that one. Jimmy Anderson running around and watching it go into the crowd. It's a fair strike. Well, he's got a terrific backswing, Mitchell Johnson. Nowhere near this one, he just goes through with it. Monumental lead for the Australians as Mitchell Johnson and Peter Siddle make their way back to the dressing room. Up with the short ball, and he's hit it straight down back with square leg straight. Oh, that's a beaut. That is an absolute rip, that. <laughs> as well played, too. Australia 1 0 up in the series. George away to take the catch. I, I just wanted to take it. Uh, it was a bit selfish, but I was, was right under it and took it. And yeah, it was a great little huddle. The boys were all excited. Brad Haddon said straight away, we're going in to sing, sing the team song. Um, and that was, yeah, it was just, yeah, it just blows you away to be able to, to sing that team song. It's, it's an amazing feeling to, to win a test match for your country, full stop. But to, to do it at Brisbane in front of a, a great crowd uh, who was right behind us, uh, we just pretty much demolished them in that test. The Cook Ball in Adelaide, uh, yeah, it was pretty exciting. When you can bowl someone of that calibre, um, yeah, he's, he's, he's one of the hardest guys to get out in, in test cricket. You know, he puts a high price on his wicket and to bowl a ball like that, um, yeah, it, it's, it looked like it wanted to come into him a little bit and then it sort of just went away and yeah, they're the balls that you dream of, you know, they're the balls that you visualise um, before games. So. And then Ryan Harris outplays me in Perth and bowls a bowl of batsman and um, do it in that fashion, on a, on a decent wicket. The ball was starting to reverse and I've gone up for a referral, hit, hit Stokes on the pad, there was two noises, uh, the ball's gone to backward point or, or gully. Uh, the ball's been thrown, passed for a run out, gone for four. I'd, that didn't bother me one bit. I had it in my mind that it was out. So it was given not out, and I was adamant that it was pad first, and then he's, he's hit his um, uh, bat onto pad. So I was able to get seven wickets um, for not many in a, in a test match um, at Adelaide Oval. To back it up from Brisbane, which was something I really wanted to, to focus on, was to be able to be consistent through 
like I spoke about, I wanted to bring those performances closer together. So to go from Brisbane to, to Adelaide and to be able to have a performance like that. It was my mate's birthday as well, who was there. So I sort of looked up to him and uh, with the baggy and uh, in his direction and yeah, it was quite an emotional, emotional feeling. Um, I, I, probably, I probably had a little bit of a tear in my eye, to be honest. Um, I guess because of all the, all the hard work that you go through and um, you know what you, you do uh, to the scrutiny of the game, you know the, the media. Um, you know there was a lot of talk that I wasn't going to be able to back up again in a, in a test match, and, and that'd been so, sort of throughout my career. So you know can have a good good match and then not back up the next one. So I think that was in the, the front of my mind um, that I was able to do it. Um, and do it well. It means a lot to me, um, you know, to be able to play Test match cricket for Australia. And I guess I look, like I said, I look at, uh, you know, coming back from my injury and uh, being told that, you know, plenty of people telling me that I was never going to play again. So, um, you know, it just feels very emotional for me. Our plan to their tail to bombard them with short balls definitely affected them. I think whole as a team, but yeah, definitely their bowling attack. Oh, bending it away, it's nasty. How uncomfortable do you think Broad would be feeling right now? How threatened does he feel? Oh, that's a beauty. That is good pace from Johnson. That first test, I think it surprised them a little bit, our tactics. And we did really go hard at them and consistently throughout the whole five tests we, we did it. So we stuck to our plan of, of going hard at their tail and they just didn't like it. So I definitely think it affected their, their bowling attack. You know, Anderson wasn't able to be uh, his best. Um, you know, Broad obviously played, I think played pretty well throughout the series, but um, yeah, it, it, they chopped and changed a few guys. Too hard for the tail, there's Thunderbolts for Mitchell Johnson. It's always great to play in Perth. I've always enjoyed playing Perth. Great wicket. Uh, I think it's a great stadium. Um, everyone's up close and that's got that good vibe about it. But uh, yeah, to, to be 2 0 up going into that test, um, we, we knew we were a really good chance of winning that, that test there on that wicket. the shot of the day. How good is that? And mid on, Mitchell Johnson hasn't got a wicket, but why, what a contribution that is. What about the athleticism from uh, Mitchell Johnson? The, and they've got it. the damage had been done in that Brisbane test with the short balls. Their tail were just, I think, concerned about getting short balls again, and especially on a whacker wicket uh, with cracks that they had on there. Um, I just thought I'd do the reverse malarch and uh, go the, the full ball and um, yeah, it, it happened, it worked. And we just go out there and keep bowling well um, and you know the result will take care of itself. I did not know what to do that last wicket. I sort of ran down the wicket and then I just stood there. Um, I had in my mind that I was going to do something different but yeah, I think just the emotions just took over again um, to win an Ashes series. Yeah, it's just Australia and you know to finally win one um, and to be a huge part of that um, yeah it was it was nothing better I, to to be honest it was I was looking at a lot of the guys faces just before we won that that test um, the ashes series there in Perth and just the excitement on blokes uh, you know like Steve Smith and um, you know Chris Rogers and those guys like just seeing their faces like glow up I was that, what, that, that excited me a lot more as well, I think. You know, it was just great to see that. So it just meant a lot. You could just see how much it meant to everyone. So yeah, to, to be able to play a big role in it as well. Um, yeah, I, I remember saying, uh, going over and giving uh, Watto a, a hug and saying, well done. And he was just like saying, mate, I'm really proud of you. You've done so well. And you know, that meant a lot to me. So obviously a few of us had been through a, a few losses together and you know, you know, Peter Siddle and Brian Harris and you know Michael Clark and you know, we just yeah, just 
amazing feeling. thousand fans um, does it honestly just doesn't get any better that's why um, you know you grow up you, you watch that Boxing Day test and to actually to be a part of it um, yeah it's, it's a great feeling so um, you know you've got so much support there and a, and a great stadium and a great wicket it's just a great day. 90,000 fans of the G. I had some family there and my little girl was there as well, uh, which was really cool. Um, and my brother from Townsville and uh, my wife. Oh, it's a ripper. Bowling's the best though, set him up with a couple of short ones, he got a couple away and then was able to bring one back in and bowl him. The, the crowd was so loud. I, I remember running in bowling, um, I was bowling a ball and I just couldn't hear. I just felt like I couldn't hear myself think, uh, which is probably a good thing. Um, but I almost stopped halfway through because it was just, it was almost off-putting. Um, but it was just an amazing feeling. It just put a smile on my face. It does give you a lift, but you've got to learn how to control it as well because, like I said, you can um, get carried away a little bit with it as well. But it definitely pulls you along. Um, it, it, it motivates you. It, um, you know. Not many people have had that opportunity to play in, in front of a big crowd like that, so it's um, you've got to take it in. But like I said, walk back to your mark, take it in with your mates, and then once you're at the top of your mark, you've got to refocus. He doesn't show the fact because he gets a ripper. Oh, oh, oh. that. <laughs> Hayden enjoyed it. You do when you're a ripper keeper. Listen to them. To be able to walk off the MCG after another five, uh, it, it felt like a dream come true, you know put another performance on the board and, and to do well for your country. Um, it honestly did feel like a dream come true. So to be able to be applauded off the ground, yeah, it doesn't happen all the time, you know, very often, but the MCG, you know, home of cricket, um, very special. Having that chance to win 5-0 in Sydney was, you know, it was another motivation for us to, to keep going and we wanted to really win it win it badly. Uh, we didn't change anything though, we, we, we kept sticking to our processes, kept sticking to our roles and, and plans. Always worrying him, he's worrying with good pace again Mitchell Johnson. 147 that. Oh, it's good stuff, really is good stuff. That's 150 already, ball number four. A big cheer from the crowd there. They're awake to it. They can see the speed somewhere, probably on the big screen here, I'd say. We just wanted to keep keep on that roll. And now it's there for the catch! Nathan Lyon! He's having a magical summer, Nathan Lyon. Let it slip. That's a beauty! A beauty? Get out of here. You never see them taken there. Leg slip has been there forever. Oh, first time I reckon I've seen one like that taken. Sensational. Johnson, last over of the day. Up in the air, well played. Really well played. That was a good bump. Oh, that's a beauty. What a follow-up that is. That's a super short delivery, followed up by a, a 149k an hour outswinger. Look at this. It's up there. Look at it go here. Oh, try hitting that. No chance. No chance. It was just a, another great feeling to, to play in front of a, a, a good Sydney crowd, a uh, new, new stadium as well, um, new parts of the stadium there. And, you know, the, the crowds just, just kept getting um, bigger and better um, you know, throughout the whole series. They, they stuck with us throughout the whole time and um, they were just as excited as us to, to win 5-0. But, yeah, it was, it was a great feeling coming into that being 4-0 up, uh, having that confidence. They'd changed a few guys in their, their team again. So, you know, we just had that, um, we had the same team throughout the whole, whole Ashes series. So, you know, everyone had each other's back and, um, you know, we just kept playing hard, good cricket. The good ball up there to Nick. It's vicious stuff from J. 
Johnson. He'll be in the face of him again. Look at this. This is fantastic test cricket. I think in each individual is different. Uh, you know, sometimes we say stupid things when we're out there. Why are you chirping now, mate? You're not getting wicket. Oh, bowled him. Beautifully bowled. James Anderson, full and straight, quick, and right through Ryan Harris. Sometimes we try and say things that, you know, hopefully get into their heads a little bit, uh, get into the batsmen's heads. So trying to get them to think about their, their feet or um, just letting them know that you're going to bowl another short ball. So it's, it's all mind games. Um, and I, I, that's, I love that part of the game. Um, sometimes it might look a little bit different on TV or from the outside point of view that, you know, we, we might be going a bit too hard at each other. Sometimes, yeah, it could be a bit over the top, but we're always trying to stay inside the, uh, the guidelines. Look at him going here. Biden. Two quickies. Uh, seeing red at the moment, aren't they? Mitch, turn around, get back to your mark now. I personally love, love that challenge of it as well because if you can get into someone's mind, um, if you, you, you speaking to a batsman and, and you tell them that their feet aren't going anywhere and you know hopefully they start to think about that and and you you bowl a short one at them and, and you're in their head i love that part of the game i think it's great and i don't think that's ever going to stop yeah buff's brought uh, a lot of enjoyment back into this team um, we do play a professional sport and, and we do get paid well and, and we're meant to perform at our best all the time. So every time we go out there, we're, we've got to be at our best. But we've also got to enjoy ourselves um, and that's what he's brought back into it. You know, he, you do work hard on the training paddock and out in the, out in the ground when you're playing, but you've got to have that release as well. So, um, you know, that went missing for a while and now he's brought that back in. Um, the guys are enjoying playing with each other out there on the ground. You know, we have so much fun out in the middle now and um, even in our training sessions, but we're able to go out and enjoy ourselves. It's not about you can't go out and have a beer because you've got a game in two days' time or um, you, know, you, you can go out and, and just be yourselves, you know, like, and, and that's what it's about, you know. Like, to me, I'm, I'm, I'm back to who I feel I am, like I've always been, you know, like I felt like before, um, it was just so constrictive and you just couldn't do anything. So um, now we're just, you know, being who we are. That's being our personality. Um, and it shows out in the field as well. It's a pretty tough question to answer because I don't know if you ever really fully do. Got him! Well, it was on, wasn't it? That's out got behind. Yes, a big edge. Oh, and it's all over. The stumps are down, and that's the end of the test match. Johnson has registered five wickets. The first time in his career. In 09, I was performing well. Um, and then got to the Ashes series and was very up and down. So I felt like I was going well, and then you sort of feel like you belong, but um, you're always being pushed by younger guys and, and guys that are performing. So there's, there's I don't know, I, I, I really think that if you start to feel like you really belong, I think then you, you let yourself down a little bit, you, you start to relax. Um, I think you've always got to try and push yourself and, and try and get better and better. Um, I think that's where Australia have done so well. They've you know, they, they've always tried to, to get better and better as players and, and McGrath is one a very good example and he, he said to me that he's always looking to, to improve as a player. Um, so I don't think you, I don't know if you ever feel like you belong. Um, you do get that feeling of um, uh, the team gelling and, and going really well and um, I guess for me, where it really went, has gone really well for me is this last Ashes series. I felt like I probably belonged more now um, because I know what I'm doing as well. Um, whereas in 09, I felt like I was playing really well, but I didn't know why. 
So there was always that little bit of doubt there. So um, I don't know if you can ever fully feel like you belong because I think that's when you start to relax and that's where you can drop away. Mitchell Johnson, first ball. Oh, it's up in the air. This will be out. There's the mid on. That's what they needed, the Australians. Johnson's on fire. Four for 37. My first game was in end of 05. Brett Lee had an injury or oh, something wrong with his nose or something. Had an operation. Um, and I played my first game in New Zealand on those uh, postage stamp grounds. Um, but, you know, that was, that was a starting point for me and um, playing one day cricket first. Bowls in. He gets the reward. Johnson's been outstanding. I think it's definitely been a big contributor to my career in test cricket as well because one day cricket you learn about variations and um, which is very important I think in cricket, uh, even at test level. It's just a faster game as well so you learn to I think to think probably quicker as well. Oh there we are, the athleticism and skill of Mitch Johnson. Chased that one in, pretty well done too, and then he's hit the stumps. Kyron Pollard is in all sorts. He's tucked the bat under his arm, and that may be a massive moment in this game. Mitchell Johnson has done some brilliant things this year of his own bowling. I think definitely it's been a huge part of my test career, and, and it's helped me along the way. Al Tibby hits, does hit. Does hit. Tendulka has run himself out. The physical side of one day cricket, it's, it's, it's helped as well because it's such a faster game. Um, you know, in the field you're a lot more, uh, there's a lot more agility. Um, the intensity of it can sometimes be uh, a lot quicker. Um, so yeah, all those factors come into it for sure. Serious pace, oh good catch that is. Mitchell Johnson, what a job you're doing here. T20 uh, cricket is, def is a, a definite step up in intensity. Um, as I said you can be running from one end to the other. Um, you know when you, I guess for me, like I, I've, with my throwing arm, they always want me in a, a decent position. So it might be long off and long on, or and you've got to run back and forth. So you, you do a fair bit of running, um, but also just the, the pace of the game as well. It's 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 another step up from one day cricket. It's um, it definitely does take it out of you, even though it's it doesn't last as long. But yeah, definitely uh, the adrenaline's pumping the whole time, and uh, it doesn't stop. So it's um, yeah, it's it's a you do feel quite exhausted after a 2020 game. My role as a bowler, um, yeah, I, I definitely did get confused at times. Um, throughout plenty of times in my career, um, you know. You know, sometimes the ball would swing, sometimes it wouldn't. Uh, am I a swing bowler? Am I a hit the deck bowler? Uh, so definitely there was a, a time there where I w wasn't sure on my role. Uh, and it definitely changed at times as well. I, I guess I didn't get, have a real good understanding of that uh, at times. Um, and it wasn't until this recent, probably 12 months, that I've understood my role and, and understood how I bowl completely. So um, it's taken a little while, but I feel like I'm finally there. I think for me, the ball's going to swing on its day. Oh, I'm not a swing bowler, I'm going to hit the deck, bowl the ball fast, hit it, hit the wicket hard, bowl my short balls and then get it up there when I, when I can or you know, after a good short ball. So there's going to be days yeah, where the ball swings beautifully and I've got to accept that and, and, and go with it and then there's going to be days where it's not going to swing and then I've just got to realise that straight away and then really hit the wicket hard and, and, and go that role. So I think I've really... I've got an understanding of my role now, whereas I didn't in the past. That first time that you receive it, um, it's absolutely amazing feeling, um, and no one can take that away from you ever. So um, always, always hold it close to me, and I probably cherish it probably more now, uh, to be honest. Uh, after not not playing for a while. Um, you know, occasionally I pull it out of the safe at home and picking it up and putting it in my hand and, and looking at it. Um, knowing that number that you are as well, number player, um, you know, 398 for me. Um, it's just so special. 
always give it a little kiss uh, before I go out to play as well. I'd like to stay involved in cricket uh, somehow with, with the fast bowlers and the fitness side of things. Um, I just believe that it's a huge it's a huge thing because what I've gone through um, and what I've seen as well, like with the guys coming through now, the young guys and, and where I was when I was younger. So I feel like I've had a lot of experience with the fitness side of things. Um, so I feel that I can give a lot back to, to cricket. I feel like I've gone on the right path and, and have some knowledge now. So um, yeah, hopefully I can stay involved and um, you know, look at a new breed of fast bowler.